So we are finally to our last video of radicals or of roots. In this video, we're going to be learning how to simplify bigger fractions with roots involved with them, and we'll also be focusing on how to rationalize the denominator. So let's go ahead and see just an example of this. This is one of the simpler examples. How do we simplify this fraction when there's a square root involved? And we can think about it a couple of different ways. The easier way to think about it is to think about factoring using your best friend in math. If we look at all of the coefficients here, the 3, the 9, the 6, we notice that they all have a common factor of 3 in them. So what we can do is we can factor a 3 out from all of those pieces. So let me factor out a 3 from the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm just going to write 6 as 3 times 2. Not our typical thing that we think of when we do factoring, but we know that we can do that by just simple math. So in my numerator, if I take 3 out of this, 3 divided by itself gives you 1, plus 9 divided by 3 gives me 3, and I just copy over my square root of 5. Now, I've changed this problem from an addition type of problem, where I know I cannot cancel anything, into a multiplication type of problem, where I can cancel things. So, I can reduce these 3s, and that leaves me with 1 plus 3 root 5 over 2. And I have simplified this fraction. Now, this is one way that you can think about this. And if you want to do it that way, that's perfectly fine. But let me show you an alternative way to do this. And either way is going to be OK. It's just up to your personal preference at this point. So looking back to this problem from the beginning, I can actually split this up with two separate fractions. I can only do that when I have one denominator. So if you have more than one piece in the denominator, you cannot split it up in this way. Basically, I'm just going to take each piece and write it over that individual denominator. Now, we actually do this quite often, but we do it in the alternate way. We start from here, and we end up something like this. Basically, we work to add fractions by finding a common denominator, and then we do that by just combining the two numerators together. So we see this before, just not in this route. We usually do it in the alternate route. So I know that I can split up each of these by putting them over the denominator individually. Now I can just reduce each of these fractions. So 3 divided by 6 gives me 1 half. And 9 divided by 6 divide each of those by 3 gives me 3 halves. So that leaves me with 1 half plus 3 root 5 over 2 which is sometimes OK to leave it as separate fractions. Or if I want to keep it in a big fraction form, again, I have a common denominator of 2. So I just add my two numerators together. So two different ways you can simplify big fractions, even if they have a square root in them, like this example here. Now, the rest of this video is going to focus on rationalizing the denominator. And what that means is rationalizing the denominator is to basically eliminate the root in the denominator. So when you get your final answer here, there should absolutely be no more roots in the denominator. Now, this doesn't mean that you're actually simplifying the problem. It just means you're manipulating it in a different way. So let's start with example 1 here. I have 5 divided by square root of x. Again, my goal is to rationalize the denominator, which means when I'm finished with this problem, I should have no more roots in the denominator. Well, the trick that I'm going to use here goes back to that hint that I just showed you in the last video. It says, anytime I take a square root by itself, I'm just left with the number on the inside with no more root involved. So what I want to do here is I want to multiply this by an exact same square root. Now, we know that if I do it in one place, I have to do it in another place as well. 
So I'm multiplying this by root x over root x, where really I'm multiplying it by a very ugly version of 1. Now I know it's okay to multiply anything times 1 because it's going to leave me with the exact same thing. So really, again, I'm manipulating this problem. I am not changing it at all. So in fraction multiplication, I multiply straight across. So on the top, I have 5 times root x, which gives me a 5 root x. And in the bottom, root x times root x just leaves you with the piece that's on the inside, so that is x. So we have done what we set out to do. We have rationalized the denominator, meaning we have gotten rid of the root in this denominator here. Now, it's not simpler in any way, but that's not what our goal was for this problem. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can do example two on your own. Example two is very similar to example one, except for I have a big square root rather than just a square root in the bottom. No big deal, if you want to see it as two individual square roots, that's perfectly doable by using this property that we've seen back here. You can always combine or separate square roots by division. Now, to rationalize the square root, I multiply it by the identical square root in the denominator. So, when I multiply this straight across on the bottom, root 3 times root 3 just cancels out and leaves me with 3. In the top, root 2 times root 3 gives me a square root of 6. I have rationalized the denominator. If I can simplify the numerator, then you would be expected to do so, but you cannot. Square root of 6 does not divide into a good pi and a bad pi, so you have done what this problem asked you to do. Again, these problems might not look any simpler in the end. Our whole goal here is just to get rid of the root in the denominator. Now, these are two of the easier examples of this. And they are easier because they have no operations involved other than the fraction that we see. So let's look at some more of these examples, but these are definitely the more complicated examples. And these are more complicated because we have addition and subtraction in these. So these actually require completely different steps than if you just had a single fraction all on its own. So I'm going to stop this video here, and in the next video, we're just going to be working on how to rationalize these types of examples when they have addition or subtraction in them.